cool part of Tailwind CSS is the ability to create plugins. And these you can think of as like reusable components that you can mix interchangeably between projects. And the argument might come um, that, well, why wouldn't you just create additional styles in your app and use it that way? And that's the CSS approach versus the JavaScript approach, which is plugins. So you're writing CSS in JavaScript to dynamically add components and, and other additional styles to Tailwind CSS is the, is the use case for plugins. But back to the argument, um, it's basically boils down to preference I've found. So in the CSS world, you want to, you know, add custom styles. It's, it's like a known thing. There might be some edge case that you might run into where you need a custom style or a component added to your app. And you can actually contain those and add those as components using CSS with Tailwind. Or you could do it this way, which is add a plugin that can be imported as JavaScript as a module and imported as a plugin, as you can see here in the docs. So we're going to go over that today in this guide. It's going to be a quick one, but I wanted to show you just a way to create a reusable plugin that maybe you or your team might use in multiple projects that maybe you're scaffolding new apps all the time, making MVPs like I commonly do. And I commonly reach for Tailwind CSS, so this is just kind of like a a no brainer as far as if I want something that's going to be the same um, per app, I might include it as a plugin. So to get started with this, I'm going to use Veet as my little bundling tool to start with. Um, if you know me well enough, I use Rails pretty much for everything, or Ruby on Rails. But for some stuff that's lightweight or just like a prototype, uh, I will reach for Veet. It's just quick, efficient, and easy to get started with. Uh, so let's go ahead and actually install that. I'm going to show you, walk you through how to install it. If you don't have it installed already, you'll want to actually just use NPM or Yarn. I like to use Yarn personally, so I'll do it here. And I have an empty, well, not empty, but I have my tutorials folder that I have on my system. And I'm going to install this as Yarn Create Vite. It'll either go fetch Vite and install it, or it'll kind of run through the installer if it's on your system already. In my case, it's already on my system. So there is a like a little bit of a, I guess, wizard, as you could call it to setting up the project. So what I will call it is, let's see, button, plugin, tailwind, something like that. Um, and the repo that you might see in the final code, that name might be different. That's just because this is my second time running it just to show you the actual final result. So I'll run this. It'll set up the uh, button project name. It's going to be a, a plugin based on buttons, if you can't guess. I go with vanilla JavaScript personally. There's a lot here you could choose from. Choose whatever you're comfortable with. And I don't really like TypeScript either, so we'll go with JavaScript. That's basically it. It'll kind of fetch and scaffold the, the project. You still need to CD into it. So we'll say CD button plugin tailwind. And inside there, we'll run yarn. That'll go fetch dependencies as needed. And then also yarn dev. So that's stage one of getting the project off the ground. That will go and boost a server to your local environment. And it's just showing you the dynamic qualities you can do with the framework. It's a little bitty, like, I, I don't even know how to describe it. If you read the docs, it'll, it'll tell you more. Front end tooling framework, essentially. So a lot of cool little bells and whistles. We won't really use it for that capability, but it's just easier to get started with installing CSS or Tailwind CSS. So that's why I reach for it. So let's go do that next. There is a little guide as far as installing Tailwind. What I like to do is go to the framework guides and look for Vite in our specific case. And if you're using something else, go ahead and use it or just the typical Tailwind CLI is ter perfectly fine. Um, what I want to do is make sure we install these dependencies though. So we need, um, I'm going to just copy this part because I'm going to use yarn per on my end. So we'll say yarn add, and then paste that in and it will add tailwind CSS, post CSS and auto prefixer. We go fetch those as de dev dependencies. That's that dash D means it's a de dev dependency. And if we open that app up in our visual studio code, I have the old or the first version I created there. In this um, instance, we have that file. You'll see the, the assets and stuff that are loading in our demo app here. And that's gonna be just ready um, to pretty much remove. We're not gonna need this because we're gonna reformat the, the front end here in a second. But let's get Tailwind installed. I just wanted to show you that a dev dependency 
were added. So we have V, Tailwind, Post CSS, and Auto Prefixer. Now, on top of that, the guide mentions adding post CSS, uh, like a post CSS config. So we'll add a slash p when we do this little command here. npx tailwind css init slash p is, I believe, short for post CSS. And the, what this does is creates a configuration file for tailwind and also a post CSS config file. Uh, we won't really need to, to touch the post CSS config, but I'll just show you what it looks like there. But inside the Tailwind config, we do need to actually pass the content through. So I'm going to copy what they have here just to do everything. And that's going to look for just our only our index HTML file. If you have more than one HTML file, that you want to pass that here. We have our main style sheet here. I'm actually going to remove everything in here because we won't need it. We'll append this part of the setup from Tailwind's guides in there. These are directives, they're called, built into Tailwind. Then um, basically with that done, we already have the ability to just run our dev environment right here and V will take care of the rest. So that's the, the beautiful thing. There's no like additional stuff to add to our scripts, which is a common step you might need to do in another environment. This is using React. I think it works with any of these use cases. You might need to change your templating engine based on what you picked. They don't have just vanilla JavaScript, so I just ran with the React one. And then you'll see that nothing's booted yet, but if we go and run our server once more, it resets. So now we can tell that Tailwind's CSS is working. Uh, it says no utility classes are defected in your source file. I'll double check the content option. And I think that's because I, I have a source path and it really shouldn't be that. So let's go and change that back to this and see if it's still barking. No. Okay. I think the source thing was incorrect. So I told you wrong there. What we will do is first clean some stuff up. I don't need this JavaScript file SVG, nor do I need anything being piped into the um, actual index path. They basically do it all with JavaScript. I still use HTML. I'm going to make a title for this plugin tutorial. The nice thing about Vite is it shows you exactly what's wrong in many instances. So I like that about it. Um, in our case, this is basically all that's wrong here. We don't need anything here besides this import style sheet and we'll get a blank slate essentially at that point. So what I'll do from here is actually add a class of, I'm going to get our markup in order of, let's see, BG stone just to give it something different than white and it changes ever so slightly. Then I'll add a container. We can tell Tailwind's for sure working now, which is great. Create a max width container that is offset from the top and bottom and left and right. So we'll say just considerably larger and I'll create an H1 just to give us context of where we're at and what we're doing. Could probably make this text stone 800 for the whole body just to follow the theme. And then we can add our same title there just to match. That should give us this. Then we want to say text center for that and spell it correctly. There we go. Okay, below that, I'm actually going to add a row of buttons and we'll eventually add styles for these through the plugin. So the whole goal is to make that really reusable. So I could basically drop in the plugin in any app that I make and have use of it instead of having to like copy any style sheets or anything. So I'm going to do button, let's see, times six. Whoa, I think. There's a way to do that and make it go to a new line, but I'm blanking on how to do that. So we'll go the manual route. All right. And then for each, we're going to have a class of button. So I'll command click. I'm on a Mac type class button and then button. I don't know, uh, 
solid we'll start with and then I'll change this one to outline this one to ghost just going through different edge cases you might need for buttons and then I'll do primary danger and then custom not customer custom danger primary ghost outline and solid so these won't look like anything at all at this point just generic buttons that are reset in html so there's no appearance or anything and that's what we want we want it to be basically naked at this point and in our tailwind config we have everything set up to rock and roll but we still need to, act to actually make this plugin concept so the way to go about it is to actually make a new javascript file and that can live wherever essentially you can make it another module that you install with yarn which is probably what i would do if i ended up scaling that up a bit or just include it in your project like i'm going to do so i'll say uh, tailwind custom buttons.js and inside that we'll actually export a function so we'll say module exports equals function And that function will pass through a destructured arguments. And these are built in plugins. Um, what are they called in Tailwind? Helpers, so helper functions. All these here you can pass through at your discretion what you need to do. And it gives you access to essentially the full framework should you need to utilize it. So in our case, we're gonna for sure add component for the button sake and then also it will be add components and then also theme because we'll need access to the theme colors. So inside that, I'll create a const of buttons. This will kind of be our setup or options for the buttons. We'll have a default. And here we're going to essentially write CSS in JavaScript, which some people have reservations for. Um, it's it's kind of yucky to me, but it's I mean, if it means reusability and cleaning things up, sometimes it's worth, worth a while. So we'll say padding rim. And you need to use this different syntax since we're in a new environment. So it's definitely not right, like writing real CSS. You're writing JavaScript version. So you'll see the camera case syntax throughout. So we'll say border radius, medium, and then font weight, and display. text align all right that gives us a basis so now all of our button elements can be of that variety if we want to test this out we can go into our tailwind file and require that plugin now so if we say require we'll do a dot forward slash and then you can actually with vs code pass that in and it should render that oh i'm not actually adding the components yet so let me forgive me i forgot one step here so let's go back to our component and i'll actually add it below using that add components function that we're just structuring through and we'll just pass in the variable name we'll get those back now we can see the updates so now we have a button class that's actually being applied which is beautiful so with that little you know JavaScript, we are able to pretty much create something reusable there. Now, depending on your app, you might need a lot of custom buttons here. So I'll go through and I'm going to paste some in just to save us some time. Here's a couple other ones. We'll have button ghost, button outline, button solid. And that gives us these blue ones. So the ghost is kind of the, uh, another name for it's invisible until you hover over it. Outline physically shows the outline and solid is just going to be solid. And we're able to hook into the theme attribute here or the function here and pass in colors and whatnot from the tailwind defaults automatically. And then you can do these and like these little um, variances in JavaScript as well. I think tailwind extends it enough to be able to do that, which is pretty powerful. So we can continue the, the theory or the train through here and add a couple more. Let's add primary. Oops, let's copy this one. primary and then we'll have a background color of 
let's save teals or um, indigo. I mean, colors indigo 500, and color will be white. Hover will be essentially indigo, just a shade darker. Okay, that should give us our primary button. There it is. Danger, I'm just including this to show you the variances you can add. Doesn't matter what it's called, really. You can just add whatever you need. So danger, we'll just do the typical rose. You could use red here. I like the rose color a little more. It's a little less contrasty. And then I'll add one last one that's going to be a custom one. And I want to show you this little gotcha that you could use if you wanted. Um, with this theme clause, you can actually pass in multiple parameters here as like a, as a, I guess you'd call it a backup. I'm going to make these teal just to show you that they're going to be teal to start. And when that loads, there we go. We've got our custom button. Now, what if you wanted to add an actual custom color? It's hence the name. So what you could do here is I'm going to pass in this, we're going to pass theme back through as another parameter in the theme. It's kind of like a callback function calling itself recursive. So we'll essentially add that to the very end of each. And then we can call custom and then custom hover. Excuse me, it should be colors.custom. And then colors dot custom oops, custom hover. So it's a little confusing to see, but essentially we're going to have a custom property in our Tailwind config to extend the theme. So you see this extend object. You can actually extend colors here and pass in whatever you want. So in our case, we'll have a custom and then a custom hover and then pass in some values there. Actually blinking on what I used before, we can make this whatever. So maybe I'll just make it a new color with our eye picker, maybe something brown-ish, yucky-ish, I don't know. Like a weird peach color. So we'll start with that on our custom foreground and then our hover state of it maybe a little darker again it's all relative to what you would use but just to show you by example when we load that back up now it's going to apply that instead of our theme our, our teal color which is the back backup essentially so now we have that in our arsenal we're able to tap into extension of colors in tailwind and kind of go hog wild there which is great now you could go and take all these buttons and extend this add components to include the variance. So a callback or an options of this function actually accepts an object and you could pass in variance on the fly. And variants are just a way to define, I guess, interactions and use cases for a specific class name or component. In our case, this is components. So we will respond to style changes if we write something that's responsive, uh, hover or focus. So in our case, if you wanted to do something that was like hover BG black, it would actually re respond to that before your actual custom styles you've already implemented here. So if that makes sense, the cascading nature of CSS overwrites it in that regard. So that gives you the tools to be able to overwrite it, even though you've defined it customly before if that makes sense. So that's to me is really powerful, really reusable. And a lot of times button styles, I'll define them def and design them around a certain instance, but then maybe you need a slightly smaller button in some specific case that still matches what you need, but you know, all these variances, and this is where you can override those should you want to add those different variances. Now, when you add something like this, the file size of your final style sheet gets huge which is, you know, expected with something like Tailwind. But that's the whole point in the beginning, if you recall, of this content param. Uh, when you pass the files through there, it runs through a purge uh, 
kind of process that takes anything that isn't used and removes it from the final bundle. And that's just useful for the sake of making your page speed load fast and all the other stuff. So that is essentially it. I hope that was useful. I use this honestly, minimally, I, I kind of tend to favor the CSS approach, which is another route I could do a video on where you use app, apply statements and also like the at layer principles in tailwind. So you'd be basically adding it all here. You'd say like at component components, something like that. I forget if that's the real name, but you'd add your classes in that way. And Tailwind kind of does the same thing in the back end to, to add those as components so you can update it and use it as a module kind of modular kind of way. So this is the other route where if you define JavaScript, I think this is really powerful for if say you have a team and you need to do a lot of MVPs, like make new apps or prototypes. You don't want to define your button styles every time. Find the Duff style sheet to copy and paste over. So instead, maybe you port this script or the components to a module that you can just do like a yarn install and then import it as a plugin to Tailwind and wham, bam, you're done. So that's the beauty of that. And I, I definitely see the appeal. All right, that's it for now. I will continue with the Tailwind stuff coming up. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.